Ben Okay. Uh, yeah. Hello and welcome to another one of our webinars um, to, uh, about the uh, IEC and the world of uh, the, the IEF. Uh, today we're talking about how to present your paper at the uh, IEC, the International Astronomical Congress, uh, and uh, this is partic uh, particularly geared towards the IEC that's that's coming up next month in uh, in Paris. So my name is Patrick Hamlock. I'm chair of the Workforce Development and Young Professionals Program Committee. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm lucky enough to be again host of uh, one of those webinars, but uh, I couldn't do it uh, without uh, Scott and uh, Carol. So you, Scott Madry and Carol Canet uh, are again uh, helping helping us here with uh, their uh, tremendous expertise and uh, insight into uh, how we can present uh, uh, at the IEC. So. Um, let me give you again a bit of a background here. So this is uh, hosted by the uh, IF uh, Public Speaking Lab that was uh, created a couple of years ago to, to provide assistance in public speaking and presentation skills uh, for attendees of the IF programs. So, uh, and it's uh, set up in collaboration with the uh, IF Workforce Development Young Professional Program Committee, uh, which is an administrative committee that, that uh, serves the uh, next generation of space professionals at the mainly the International Astronomical Congress and uh, is basically here for uh, the young professionals, but we're not doing this only for young professionals or students. Um, we're also uh, presenting this, this uh, information for everybody that may uh, need it, maybe for at the IEC for the first time. So um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's get into it. Uh, and uh, yeah, to, to do that, I'll hand it over to Scott. Hello, everyone. I'm Scott Madry. Very happy to be with you uh, on another one of our excellent webinars on preparing people to get ready to present at the IAC. So one of the things that we do here, as well as at the IAC, is we use this wonderful uh, tool called Slido. Uh, and it's it's a extremely useful thing for us. It's used throughout the IEC uh, in order for people to ask questions, provide feedback. And so we would love it if everyone right now on your phone, on your computer, <clears throat> please go to slido.com, enter hashtag IAFPS lab. And we have four questions that we would love for you to answer. So please tell us, is this your first paper that you've had accepted at the IC? Is this your first paper at a major international Congress? Are you a native English speaker? And how confident do you feel about your public presentation skills? And we'll show you the results uh, at the end of the webinar. And we're trying to collect these data so that we can better understand and better serve the community uh, through these webinars and our other programs that we put on throughout the year. So let me again say welcome. Uh, we're very pleased to have all of you with us. Uh, let's talk about what we're going to do. We're going to talk about presentation skills. So in our other webinars, we talked about submitting your abstract and writing your paper, doing your interactive paper. This one is uh, focused entirely on how to actually give your presentation at the IEC. And this counts equally both for a traditional paper as well as uh, the new interactive format. Everything we're going to say counts for both of these. So we're going to talk about presentation skills itself. We're also going to give you some uh, information about how the IEC works, the speaker process, and ultimately, our goal is to have you become a student, a practitioner of good presentation skills. And uh, we do want you to please sign into Slido, answer our questions. You can also uh, ask questions, and we leave a lot of time at the end of this for questions and discussions so that you will be able to ask us questions, and we'll do our very best to answer. So let's learn something new and hopefully also have some fun doing it together. So first thing we should say is congratulations uh, for this upcoming uh, IAC in Paris. 
over 4,900 proposals, submissions were made to this huge number of technical sessions or interactive presentation sessions. These came from all over the world, people from 97 countries, and your paper was selected. So that's an accomplishment right there. And you've had to do a lot of the hard work. You had to submit, you had to write the paper, you had to do your video and your lightning talk. And remember the final deadline for submitting your paper is September 1. So time is running out if you have not done that. But now that you've gone through all of these steps, it's time to give your live presentation. And that's what we want to talk about now. Let's talk about how to give a great live presentation at the IAC. And I'm going to turn it over to my good friend and colleague, Carol Carnett, who never looks like this when she talks. And she's going to start us off on how to succeed. Uh, good morning, everyone. There are really two parts to a good presentation. One is the PowerPoint that supports your presentation. And then the other is actually how you give it. I'm going to talk about your PowerPoint and slide issues that you can avoid and the way to make your PowerPoint support your presentation, not take the audience's attention away from your presentation. So first of all, don't have too many slides. Our rule of thumb is one per minute, one slide per minute. And that's usually enough for you to talk to it. And it's enough for people to see whatever is important on your slide. Spend time on the important parts and make it even. Don't get bogged down with your first few slides. Give each slide equal time. Use larger fonts, and we recommend dark letters on a light background. Some people like to use white on black. Sometimes people have a hard time reading that in the room. So dark on light background is the safest. Include pictures and graphics to make your screen interesting and always number your slides. This is especially important if people want to ask questions, they can refer to the slide number and that will help your Q&A. Always put your email and your contact information on your last slide, but don't just do that. Also bring your business cards and stay after the session. So if people want to contact you, you can give out your cards. You can also ask, answer more questions. If English is not your first language, please try to get your presentation checked over by a native English speaker. Your friend or colleague who is a native speaker can help check your slides. Also, if you have formulas and figures, you should make those visible. Now, your, your next slide, please. Schedules and timing, you should be prepared. If things change, you have to be flexible. If you have problems with your PowerPoints, if you need to, just talk about your conclusions and direct people to your paper. If the technology fails, you will not fail. You will keep on speaking and give the information that you came to give. If there are interruptions in the sound, ignore it. Just keep on going. If your microphone dies, speak more loudly and keep on going. If there are time reductions when you have your actual presentations, like sometimes in a session, there won't be as much time as you thought was going to be allotted for your presentation. So just go to your conclusions, make sure that if the only thing you have time to give is your major points and the conclusions of your research, then just give that. But always keep calm and keep on going. Now, you should have a few backup slides just that you can use for Q&A. You know your material. You've probably presented it somewhere before, and you can figure out what people are likely to ask. So have two or three backup slides for the very important things that you think may come up. Also, during your presentation, people will be coming and going. This is very common in the IEC and it's normal. Do not, do not worry, it's not about you. It's about people's schedules and other commitments they have. So this is very common and do not let that distract you from giving the information you came to give. Now, when we have Q&A in these sessions, don't be afraid. If you don't understand, 
ask the person to repeat the question or get another person to translate if you're having trouble understanding or simply ask the person to see you after the presentation is over. And that way you may be able to answer the question better. If you yourself have to leave for another talk, please let the chair of your session know beforehand so that they can make accommodations for that. The same is true if you think you may be late because you're giving another talk in another session. Your chairs on both ends need to know about that so that the schedule runs smoothly. Above all, don't get flustered, be professional, and just keep going no matter what happens. Now, Scott's going to tell you about how you actually give this presentation. So <clears throat> thank you very much, Carol. Um, here's a couple of good tips. Uh, the IEC is a huge event and there are many different rooms uh, and they're set up all essentially the same, but they can vary a lot in size and shape. So we always suggest if, as soon as you arrive, find out which room your session is in and go and look at that room before your session. You want to get a sense of how big a room is it? What's the setup like? Where's the podium? <clears throat> Are you really going to need to use the microphone a lot? Are people going to probably be able to hear you uh, without the sound? If you can, go to that room in a session before yours so you can actually hear people speak. Get a sense of what the room is like, and it will be more familiar when your program time comes for your session, always arrive early. You want to come early. Don't appear just before your time. You want to come at the very beginning of the session, before the session, introduce yourself to the moderators. They want to know, are all my speakers here? So let them check that little box off, <clears throat> go up and tell them that you're here so that they know. Dress up and look good. I see is a very formal event. Guys wear tote, uh, coats and ties. Uh, it's, it's a very formal event. So plan for that. Plan to dress up. You want to look your best. Your future boss may be in the audience. So when you come in and introduce yourself to the moderator, sit up front. Don't go all the way back to the back of the room <clears throat> so that you have to walk all the way forward. Things need to move along quickly. So sit up front so when your time comes, you can just stand up and go straight to the podium. And the key thing here is never, ever, ever go over time. There are so many paper sessions, you cannot eat into somebody else's time. So never go over your allotted time. Now on the podium, there will be a system. Uh, it varies year to year, but usually there's a green, a yellow, and a red light. When you see that red light, you have to stop. Don't make your moderator stand up and come over and tell you to quit. Uh, so be aware of the time. And some it, we often suggest if you have a colleague or friend, have them stand up in the back of the room and tell you five minutes, two minutes, one minute, you have to stop. Never go over time. Please don't just stare at the podium and read a paper uh, or read your slides. Look at your audience, speak to your audience. It's terrible when people turn their back and just point at the screen and read the bullets uh, your audience can read. So don't just read the slides, don't just read a paper look at your audience, interact with your audience. The main thing is enjoy the experience. You have something important to say. Speak with confidence. Enjoy the experience of giving a paper at the IAC. It's very important that we all remember that the IAC is a global, international, and interdisciplinary program. There are people from all over the world, and many, perhaps most, do not have English as a first language. So you must speak clearly. You must speak 
a little bit slower and a little bit more clearly so that people can understand you. Public speaking is different from conversational speaking. And you have to be clear. And especially you have to slow down. This goes for everyone, native English speakers as well. Don't speak too fast. We know you only have a few minutes, but please slow down. A good trick that Carol and I teach people all the time, and I've been using it while I've been talking here, is you put a short stop between every word. And this really helps non-native English speakers understand. They can hear a word, translate that. They can hear a word, they can translate it. You can still speak quite quickly, but it really helps people to understand the whole goal of this is to share our knowledge and ideas. So speak slowly, try to limit your TLAs. If you don't know what TLAs are, those are three letter acronyms. The space world is full of three letter acronyms and not everybody in your audience will know all the acronyms that you take for granted and use all day long. So don't get lost in the jargon. Remember that you're speaking to an international audience. Many may not be specialists in your field. And so try to at least, if you're gonna use a lot of acronyms, define them the first time that you use them in your presentation. And one of the things that Carol and I do all the time is try video, videoing yourself, <clears throat> give your talk and watch it. It's horrible to watch, it's painful, but it's really, really helpful. Many people have uh, public speaking things they do that they don't even realize. Some people walk, rock back and forth uh, but on their left and right foot, and they have no idea that they're doing. Other people are sort of swaying back and forth. Some uh, people uh, put uh, between uh, every word. And if you video yourself giving your presentation and watch it, it's painful, but it can really help you uh, improve the quality of the presentation that you're going to give. So, as I said before, make eye contact. Don't hide behind the podium. Don't just stare at the podium and read your piece of paper. Make eye contact. Speak to the audience and use the microphone. Don't tap it. Don't be two centimeters away, but use the microphone so that your audience can hear. One time at IEC, I, there was a speaker and they played with a laser pointer the whole time they were speaking. I guess they thought we were cats or something. And it was horribly distracting that they were just constantly waving it at the screen. So don't do that. Don't just read your text. The people there can read. Speak to your main points and let the PowerPoint summarize what you're saying in bullet format. In the theater world, we have an old saying of own the space. You want to fill the space. So don't hide behind the podium. Don't speak really quietly. Own that space. You're the person who's speaking. You want to fill that space. You want to draw the audience's eyes to you. And there's an old saying in teaching, we want to tell them what you're going to tell them. You tell them and then you tell them what you told them. So think about your intro, the body, and your conclusion, but you want to be very clear, as Carol said, don't get hung up on the first part. Make sure you spend enough time on your conclusions. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Carol and she's gonna tell you one of the secret tricks we have in the International Space University. Carol, you're off. Sorry, I did not realize that was off. When you give your talk, if you have a friend or colleague who can be there to help you, have that person learn these symbols. The first is slow down, this slow down. They can do this gesture, they can, where you can see them, 
No one else will know what it is, but you will know to slow down. The other one, mic problems or room problems with acoustics, this is speak louder, speak louder. That's drawing up and louder. Other gestures that Scott just showed you before that your friend could give, if you don't, if you forget to watch those little lights on the podium, somebody is there saying five minutes and two minutes, one minute, and this means stop. You really have to stop. So use these if you can and have someone help you. That way you will have a backup if you get so nervous or excited that you don't watch the little lights on the podium. So you can do that. So Scott? let's talk just a little bit about the culture of IAC. If you haven't been to one, it's fascinating. We have a saying that space is big, but the space world is actually very small and they will all be there. They will all be there at the IAC. So it it's, uh, has its own culture. And one of the things, as I mentioned before, is formal dress. Uh, IAC is a coat and tie formal dress affair. It just is. And, and you want to fit in. So don't show up in your student t-shirts. Uh, I always bring a handful of old ties and hand them out to people who don't bring ties. It's very collegial. Networking is strongly encouraged. They want people, uh, the heads of agencies, astronauts. It's entirely okay to come up and introduce yourself, to speak to people. That's the whole idea, but do so in a very uh, polite and uh, more formal way. If you see someone and they're speaking to someone else, don't just come in and interrupt and start talking to them. Uh, I see as a very uh, collegial uh, event, people want you to come up and introduce yourselves and say hi, but do so in a polite way. And it really is a, a formal dress affair. Now, you can do this. We know you can. We want you to know that you can. But we realize public speaking is a learned skill. And anybody can master it. So it can help you in your career. It can make you a better professional. Because as you go through your life, you'll be presenting probably a lot. And it's far better if both you and your audience can really enjoy your talk. So you need to be the best speaker that you can be. You can learn from other people, but we all have our own skills and strengths. And one of the ways you can figure that out is by watching yourself on your video. See where your strengths are. See things that you want to change, things that you want to keep. And those are your strengths that you can learn and you can develop. Don't try to be another speaker. Be you. You can pick something from another speaker that you would like to use, but make that your own. Scott? So what we suggest is all of you should think about becoming a student of good presentation skills. And there's no better place to do that than at the IAC. So you will see so many speakers from the heads of agencies and astronauts to students giving their very first presentation at an international Congress. And so watch every speaker, every speaker and learn from the very good and the very bad. And you will see a lot of both. You'll see some fantastic speakers, wonderful, engaging speakers. They just take your attention. You cannot help but watch and listen to what they say. And you'll also see some terrible, <clears throat> terrible speakers. And so learn from both of these. And a good habit to get into is to critique every speaker that you see. And you can start today uh, with Carol and Patrick and I. Critique every speaker you see, including us and learn from everyone that you see. <clears throat> so beyond this, sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me. 
beyond just becoming a student of public speaking skills. Go the next step and become a teacher of this. We have so few programs where people learn how to do this. It's a learned skill. So once you become a student of this, once you improve your own skills, become a teacher of good public speaking skills. You can do that as well. And so think about helping your younger colleagues. When young people come into your program or your workspace and you see their first presentation and they're making a lot of these mistakes that we all do, help these people mentor others to help them master these important skills. And you can give workshops at your workspace. You can start a blog, give a class, write a paper. There are a lot of ways that we can do this, but please think about not only becoming a student of public speaking, but help other people to gain this important skill. So that's all we wanted to present to you today was still a lot of information, but we always like to leave a lot of room for questions and answers and discussion. So please, we'll open the floor now. I'll turn it back over to Patrick and we can discuss all of this. Please ask us your questions and we'll have a discussion about all of these interesting topics. So Patrick, back over to you. Yeah, thank you very much for this great presentation. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll, I think we all have uh, learned a lot already. Let's discuss uh, some of the questions that we have received. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, um, the first one here is, uh, can we deal with questions during the presentation? What if my presentation starts to get diverted by an interesting question? Yeah, always uh, uh, an issue and you have to manage that. You only have a very brief amount of time. So don't let one person hijack your minutes by uh, asking a long question, then wanting another uh, a follow up question. So you can always politely say, it's a great question. I'd love to talk to you about that. Let's talk after the session. So there are ways to handle that. It's in many ways, I prefer to go ahead and give my talk. You have so few uh, minutes uh, to do it, but uh, obviously that is up to you to, in terms of how you manage that. Uh, Carol, do you have any ideas? Well, I think that what you said is correct. Sometimes a person will ask a question and you know that's a person who knows a lot about your field. And you can say that to you. you can say, well, obviously, you know, we have a lot to talk about and uh, we can take this after the session or we can, you know, have coffee or whatever. But don't try to answer those kinds of questions during the session. It will take up all of your Q&A. And sometimes you only have a couple of minutes for Q&A. So just always be polite and professional, but keep the session on your time schedule, not on the questioners. Yeah, and, and also, uh, again, uh, what is um, generally being done in, in these sessions is that there are uh, the, there's a session chair and, and or co-chair and, uh, and people sitting up front, usually about three, uh, that are managing the session as a whole. And they will also uh, support the, the Q&A session, usually like at the end of your presentation, there will be a Q&A session where they will... Uh, use microphones or, or direct who is who's going to ask the uh, the next question um and that's the time for questions so if you get a, a question during the presentation uh you're free of course to answer it but you also uh, if it doesn't really fit in your in your flow uh it's also fine to basically maybe say a couple words but then also mention that that you can to to save the discussion for the end of the presentation for the q a Portion. So that's it. in the end, uh, I think, like like Scott said at the beginning, it's up to you to to manage this when you're uh, at the podium. Uh, yes, and if you're nervous, just say at the beginning of your presentation, "I'd like to take questions at the end of my presentation," and that gives people a signal, and then you won't be disturbed or thrown off by a question coming out of, in the middle of your talk. Yeah, and speaking about being nervous. Uh, 
next question is how can we cope with uh, presentation nerves? So oh. basically, uh, which uh, <clears throat> is a very interesting question. I think uh, uh, something that needs to be uh, embraced rather than feared. I think like stage fright is there to to help you be on point, be your best <clears throat> self, be uh, in this uh, fight or flight mode to, to actually be very, very uh, focused. But uh, uh, yeah. Carol Scott, do you have uh, any any tips for being being nervous when you're uh, up there on the podium? Go, go ahead, Carol. Well, I was just going to say there are many ways of dealing with nerves. A famous opera singer used to hide a little glass of beer on the set and have a little <laughs> swig before she went to her next aria. You can't do that. But one of the things that really works for everybody is taking a few deep breaths. Just breathe deeply and slowly. It doesn't take but a couple of seconds. Nobody will notice that you're doing that, but it will help you calm your nerves. The other thing is when you're speaking, don't be afraid of silence. Spaces between what you're saying and you know, just taking a deep breath, that will help to calm you. Silence can be a good thing. And so don't worry about making a pause. It's fine to pause and then you can emphasize your next point with a little bit more calm, I believe. Scott? Uh, yes, Pat, um, this is always an interesting question. It always comes up. As Patrick said, uh, having a little nerves is a good thing. You're paying attention, you're, you want to succeed. It's not a good thing to be so blase, you don't care you're going on. Uh, Carol's uh, advice is excellence and deep breaths right before you go on. Uh, but also one other thing I would add is practice, practice presenting. It's a learned skill. And so the more you can do it, the better you will be. So uh, try to practice your talk that you're going to do. You can do it in front of a mirror. You can grab some friends. You can do it at your workspace. But the, the more you practice, the, the better at this you become. But almost everybody has some versions of of stage fright or nerves, take a couple of good deep breaths, but realize that everybody else is going through some version of the same thing. And uh, be brave, go up and do your best, but practice really helps you improve these skills. Yeah, and I think, uh, what, yeah, practice is, a, is of course important. Be the specialist of your own topic, obviously then nothing can surprise you. But uh, especially if, if this is one of your first uh, presentations at this level, uh, one thing that's, that, that may be uh, helpful is in particular, uh, uh, really know the first like three sentences you're gonna say. It's like know those by heart, like really practice those so that if somebody wakes you up in the middle of the night, you can say those three sent sentences. So that basically the rest will then automatically come once you start talking you're comfortable you know the slides it, everything's good but it's sometimes it's really the first thing you want to say that's really important so that's something to uh that can help you and then of course alcohol is as carol suggested <laughs> no, <laughs> but let's, let's keep that until after the first Dep day. depends on where the iaf is i i would uh add one other thing too that if you really suffer from stage fright um bring a friend with you and have that person sit on the first or second row and speak to that person. Ignore the crowd, ignore all the people you don't know. Bring a friend, someone you know, someone you trust, have them sit up front and speak to that person. And that uh, uh, oftentimes can take away the nerves and the edge because you're just speaking to someone that you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next question here uh, is along those lines of questions. Uh, what if someone asks a question that stumps me? <laughs> uh, let me, if you have that happen, believe me, it is okay to say, you know, I'm not sure about the answer to that question. Uh, let me get back to you and we can discuss it. You know, let give me your contact information or whatever. There is nothing wrong with not knowing everything. 
Um, that in fact, sometimes I think it's almost better if you feel comfortable, you can be honest and say, you know, that's what I didn't think about before. Let's talk about that offline or whatever, but it's all right. The, the other side of that coin is don't ever, ever make stuff up you don't know, because right. many people in the audience will realize that you're making something up and you don't know. That's a terrible error to make, and you can lose your credibility. So don't pretend you know an answer when you don't, because there are going to be people in that audience who actually do know. I agree completely with Carol. It's quite all right to just say, wow, that's a really interesting question. I'm not really sure. Let's talk about that offline after the session. And in, in particular, I think it's a very interesting uh, situation because that can be the beginning of something new for your research, for your topic that you're talking about. Because if somebody can know enough about it to ask you a question that stumps you and you don't know the answer, then that can lead to a future better answer uh, and, and mm -hmm. more research or uh, unless it's completely off topic then, then of course uh, if it's if it's not about your research ignore the question <laughs> okay uh, then uh, the opposite uh, how can I deal with an audience losing interest in my presentation and how can I get a board audience back oh that's always uh, uh, an interesting question and Part of that is, that we did not mention earlier is you should be constantly monitoring your audience while you're giving your talk. And are they engaged? Are they really listening? Are people looking through the big, thick IEC book to see which session they would rather be in? And so the first step of that question is a good technique is you want to be monitoring your audience. <clears throat> if you feel your audience is losing interest, uh, you first thing you should try to do is go to part of your presentation, which is a key point. You may have lost them possibly because you're still in the preliminary laying out the problem. So my suggestion would be, and every uh, situation is different, you have to play it as it comes. But my suggestion would be, go to the key part of your talk. Go ahead to the, the conclusions, what you really came to let people know, and hopefully that will get their attention back. I also would like to recommend, if it is appropriate, and with some talks, this works better than others, but I have seen some speakers open or at the very uh, beginning of their talk, ask the audience a question. Um, how many of you, this, that, or the other thing, or some question that relates and leads into or promotes your talk. And if that is appropriate and you think that you might be losing your people, ask a question try to get their attention back. Sometimes that will work very well. Okay, uh, then uh, next question should be fairly straightforward. Is there a screen where you can see your slides on the desk or in front of the stage? And uh, I think the answer is uh, sometimes and sometimes not. So I think that, that depending on, your, uh, on the room, uh, uh, there are larger rooms, there are smaller rooms and, uh, and some rooms you don't have a dedicated monitor in front of you so they're um and they may have to rely on the screen that may be behind you so uh, often you there is a laptop on the podium yeah uh sometimes there's a big screen down on the floor it just depends on the room that's one reason why you want to go and check out that room before your session so that you can get a sense of, of what it is but i guess patrick's right the answer is sometimes yes be, be sure to know your uh, presentation enough so that in case you don't have a screen, you, you, you're still okay. And please uh, don't give your talk like this. Correct. Yeah, this uh, is important for those of you who are doing interactive presentations <clears throat> because you will have a small screen there where you're presenting. So you need to be sideways to the screen so that you can see it, but your audience is connecting with you. And that's true, even if you're in a big room, if all you have is the screen, 
try to be sideways to the screen so that you don't ever put your back to the audience. You can reference something there, but they can still see your face and watch your lips because a lot of non-native English speakers take a lot of cues from your face. So keep your face as much as possible towards the audience, even if you don't have anything but that big screen behind you. And another uh, question that's uh, also fairly straightforward is, uh, is there a specific PowerPoint IAC template? And uh, again, the answer is no. Uh, so you can come up with your own, uh, use your company sl uh, slides or the template, whatever you want. So if it's your career, you can basically pick something. But as uh, Carol mentioned before, make sure it's uh, light background and dark text and not the other way, other way around. That's usually not very readable. Um, then uh, what are the crucial mistakes that makes most presentations boring? <laughs> so anything that we can highlight that can, uh, can make it boring for the audience? Go ahead, Scott. People, people are very good at reading other people. If you're bored, if you're not interested in what you're saying, um, people read that immediately. Uh, people are very clever. And uh, so uh, you need to be interested and excited about the opportunity to share this knowledge with the audience. And so if you are animated, if you just by your nature demonstrate that you're happy to be there and you've got something to say and you wanna share this, it's hard for it to be boring. You don't have to dance and jump around and sing like uh, some people do, uh, including myself. Uh, but uh, if you go up and you're just sort of quiet and you just, and I'm gonna talk about my paper, it'll be the wrong message. So uh, videoing yourself helps because you can see how you're coming across, but be interested in what you're doing and that will come across. Carol? And just remember, many of the people in your session are there because they're interested in all the papers at the session, maybe some more than others. So you do have an audience who wants to be there. So that will help you initially because you know that you're talking to people, many of whom are there specifically for that topic. And as Scott said, if you are interested in your topic and enthusiastic about your topic, that will translate to your audience. Okay, then uh, do we have to plan question time from the audience in the time we are given? Uh, and there, uh, I think you will get the instructions from your uh, session chairs. Uh, usually before uh, before the, uh, the event, you will, you will already receive this information. If not, you can ask it, but uh, at the very least, the day of the presentation, uh, your, um, uh, your session chairs will basically make that clear but it's, it's usually uh, planned in. So if, if, if you've been told that you have 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 12 minutes, whatever it is for your presentation, uh, that time uh, does usually not include uh, Q&A time. And that's, that, but it's laid out for the uh, three hour session that, that, uh, that all those papers have ample time to present and then also have a couple of questions in between. Um, then uh, we have a uh, uh, question. How good is an interactive presentation compared to an oral presentation? So maybe we can highlight a little bit the, the differences, yeah. uh, and <clears throat> maybe from a presentation point of view, yeah. between so, interactive uh, and oral. I think it's great that the IEC has put a great deal of emphasis on this new format of interactive presentations. And it's very important that we stress that an interactive presentation at the Congress has absolutely equal weight with a traditional stand in front of the podium presentation. You still have to submit your paper. They uh, hold equal weight and significance. And I think this is the medium of the future. I think we're going to be moving much more towards the interactive presentations and away from the traditional stand in front of the podium and point at your PowerPoint. Uh, I love the interactive presentation mode because it is just that. You're 
you have a crowd of people standing around and it's much more interactive. It's like a, a digital version of the old poster paper uh, process that we've had for many decades at academic meetings where you have a poster paper session. People used to stand in front of one big slide and talk, but now it's with a digital screen and, and it's great because it's interactive. People are, uh, I, I love it. I think it's a wonderful thing. And uh, I think that's, uh, we're going to see much more of this, but it is just that it's interactive. So you have to plan your talk and your demeanor to be more interactive. And it's also in some ways more flexible because you're there in an open area, you have your screen, people are walking by all the time. It's like uh, the student zone on steroids because you have <laughs> people who suddenly whatever you've got on your screen catches their eye. They may, may, they may come and talk to you where in a regular session, that would never happen. You wouldn't get certain people that you're liable to get in an interactive presentation. So I think that part of it is really exciting because you just never know who's going to be there to listen. And, and so <clears throat> not just as a presenter, but as someone attending the Congress, go to the interactive session room. It's so it's dynamic. There are all these presentations going on, unlike the traditional format. So I think it's a great uh, medium for pe people who are attending as well as presenters, because you can just walk down uh, and you see all of these different talks going on and you can things will catch your eye that you really were not uh, knowing that you were going to have the chance uh, to participate in. So go and participate in, in the interactive zones. And the, uh, the, the oral presentation there is a much more traditional long form, you know, 10 to 50 minute presentation where you can talk about uh, a subject with a clearly structured talk. So you can uh, think about it beforehand, like have your narrative clear and, uh, and, and but still design your talk to be interesting essentially. So it's an, yeah, they're, they're, I think benefits to both forms. Uh, interactive is a bit more exciting, but I think the, the oral presentation still has its place. And it's, uh, but it, it requires you to make it interesting. Otherwise, people will sit in their chairs and fall asleep. Okay, so um, is it allowed to have multiple presenters, uh, for example, two for one paper? And uh, again, the, the answer here is. Generally, yes, but uh, you should definitely uh, uh, talk talk to your session chairs before the session to uh, make sure a that's okay, but uh, in general it should be, uh, but also that they're aware uh, because in general it is assumed that there's one presenter, but there's also nothing that says that it can cannot be more, um, right? So anything to. I think that's yeah. I, I that's would just idea. say only do it if you need to have it because it does sort of make a break and make a change. If it enhances your presentation, do it, but don't have three presenters just because you have three authors on the paper. Yes, in in fact, uh, one of the presentations I saw, the people had a model that was critical to explaining uh, their research. And it took actually three people to hold this thing, which was quite large, and demonstrate the different pieces. And it worked very, very well. But clearly, without the model, the presentation would not have been as interesting or as informative. OK, so the next question, I want to combine two questions, actually, here. Uh, the, the first one is, is it allowed to include minimal animations on the PowerPoint to make the presentation more dynamic? And the second question is, uh, can we show short videos in the presentation or just pictures and diagrams? So, um, I mean, the short answer is, in, I think it's allowed, it's, it's just more, uh, uh, there's a bigger risk that something will not show correctly. Usually the, mm -hmm. the presentation systems uh, aren't necessarily, uh, or they're, they're prone to errors sometimes, like if, if they have a, uh, an animation, it may not show up on the screen exactly as you hoped. Uh, plus it also complicates uh, using the clicker or the pressing the buttons. So you, uh, so you have to 
think about it. I mean, you can include it if you really need to, but I think uh, there's, um, yeah, there's potential mistakes. And for the videos, I think, again, it's allowed, but there's, um, again, the potential that the, the sound will not be on or something. So again, if you need it, by all means include it, but um, yeah, if you don't necessarily need it, it, it may just make it more complicated for yourself. I think also, if you're going to try to do that, don't try to use a link to something. Download the thing and make sure that you have it because the links can fail as well. And that can take up valuable time. It can be frustrating for you and for your audience. So if you're going to do that, have it a standalone thing where you don't have to rely on a link to an outside source. <clears throat> um, then... Uh... The next question, I know that session chairs will be in the room. Should I talk more to them or the audience? Uh, you should Which speak to the audience, but you should acknowledge your session chair. And, and there will also be a, um, a uh, probably one or two, even three people at a table. You should acknowledge them, but you speak to the audience in general. And then a uh, uh, question regarding your um, gestures here. Uh, so I assume message codes are interesting, but how can I understand if I'm making mistakes if no one in the audience can help me? Hmm. <clears throat> no one in the audience can help you? No, if, if so basically if there's, if there's somebody sitting there giving you these uh, gestures, that's <laughs> great. But if you don't, don't have anybody <clears throat> that does that for you how can you yeah, read the you, audience that you're yeah. making mistakes you just have to be aware monitor your time there should be um it varies every year but there should be something on the podium and oftentimes your moderators will also uh guide you in terms of that but uh yeah it's nice to have a friend in the back of the room but uh quite often you don't and yeah, if you yeah. happen if you happen to see me and Scott in the room when you're giving your presentation, let us know that you saw this video and that you want us to do this for you, and we can do it. Yeah, also, I think after a while, if it's if it's a first presentation, you may not necessarily pay that much attention to the audience. But if you give multiple, at some point, maybe you're able to just uh, pay attention and see if people are paying attention to to what you're saying or if they're on their phones doing something else, then maybe you, you notice that maybe they either are bored or that they cannot follow you. So you can be self-conscious if you're maybe loud enough or uh, uh, too fast. Um, so the next one, um, my organization has name badges we wear when we go to conferences or events. Does uh, anyone at the ISC do this or should I just wear my Congress badge? Uh, generally, people wear their Congress badge. You have to wear it to get into the various different parts of the facility. Uh, so most people just wear that. It will have the name of your organization uh, on it, depending on how you registered. But most people just wear the badge. You have to have the Congress badge on or you can't get in uh, to the various different areas. In particular, there's, there are badges that uh, get you in the main area or the exhibition hall, but not in the uh, in the presentation rooms. So uh, if you want to attend a presentation and you want, then you need to have your Congress badge. So that for sure you have to have, but there's nothing that says that you cannot also wear uh, your company badge or name tag. So you can have both, but you should definitely wear a Congress badge. Um, then what kinds of speaking notes are suitable or helpful? It depends on whether or not you have that little monitor. Like a lot of people on their slides, they'll have their speaking notes in that little area at the bottom where you can uh, put your cues for yourself. Nobody can see it but you. But if you don't have that and you need to rely on something that is handwritten, I would say that just bullet points for your main slide points, just to remind yourself where you are. Because if you take a lot of notes up there, that's just like trying to read a paper and you don't want to do that. Yeah. And I think specifically notes 
uh, are helpful, especially if you give uh, an hour long talk or really long presentations, then uh, it may be maybe good to have notes on your presentation to really make sure you highlight certain things uh, when you give the presentation. Uh, as it's a generally <clears throat> fairly short presentation of maximum 15 to 20 minutes, uh, then uh, you, you should basically be able to, to practice the presentation enough that the, uh, the only notes you really need are the, are the bullet points or the, the things that are on your slides. I think that's what you should be uh, ready, ready to do. Yeah, um, I think we're then, about to I, run out of time, and I do want to show the Slido results. Yes. Good. Um, Go ahead. I'm sorry that we can't get to all of your questions. Uh, I know you have a lot of questions. Uh, I do want to remind everyone that we have another program coming up, and this is a new part of uh, the PS Lab activities, is that Carol and I will be giving a two-hour live presentation skills workshop uh, the day before the Congress opens. So on Saturday, September 17, uh, at uh, <laughs> 1500 hours, 3 p.m., uh, mm -hmm. in the Congress Center in room N01. And this is uh, free. It's free for all registered delegates. It's a two hour live program. Much of it is similar to what we've just done, but much of it is different. And we again, uh, hold open a lot of time for questions and discussion. So please consider joining us on Saturday the 17th at 3 p.m. for our two hour presentation skills live workshop. So let's see if we can uh, go to our Slido results. And we would also at the same time ask you, please rate this webinar. How did we do? How can we want this to be the best program it can possibly be? So please give us feedback. Was this useful? Was it helpful? How can we do a better job next year? So here are our results from all of you. And uh, yes, this is uh, 43 responders and 86%. This is your first paper. So welcome, congratulations. 70% uh, your first paper at a major Congress international program. That's great. 77% not native English speakers and uh, <clears throat> we are hopeful that this will help you in what you're hoping to achieve when you come to Paris. And finally, yeah, how do you feel about this? Your presentation skills. And this is pretty much similar to what we usually get. Uh, <clears throat> people are mostly confident in what they can do, but we all know we can do a better job. And that's, of course, while you're here. So excellent. Thank you. Please do use Slido and tell us how we can do a better job. Tell us how we can uh, improve our programs. And uh, we very much look forward to your feedback. And that's all. That's all we have. That's all the time we have. Thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it so much. We enjoy doing these. And we look forward to seeing you in Paris. So please come up if you see Carol or I or Patrick, uh, please come up and say hi and say that you saw us in our webinar. And I'll leave it to Carol and Patrick to say goodbye. Yes, please do come and see us. We look forward to seeing you in Paris. And we really hope that we will be able to meet some of you in person and get some ideas in person from you about the webinars and how we can do better. And we just want you to have a wonderful time at the IEC all the way through. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much to uh, Scott and Carol uh, for giving this presentation. As, as always, it was very interesting and, and I think uh, helped a lot of people, at least I hope so. Uh, and uh, if you have any more questions and we didn't get to your question, uh, please uh, post it uh, in the comment section under this under this video. 
and uh, we or other people will hopefully uh, be able to, uh, to, to give you an answer. So again, thanks to everybody for, uh, for, for watching, for Carol Scott to present, and uh, yeah, see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.